Hi and welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to take a look at adding the scoring system into our VR game. Let's dive right in. So what we're going to be doing today is actually taking a look at these targets and creating our score system. Um, so when we shoot this target we're going to be able to work out how close we got to the centre and then add that as a bonus to our overall score for actually hitting the target and then pass that to the game manager. So there's a few scripts we're actually going to be editing today. One of them is the game manager script. The other one is the target script and the gunfire script. Um, not a lot will change in these, but we'll be adding a little bit in just so we can pass data around and then calculate our score properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually show you what I'm thinking of. And to do that, I'm going to jump into Photoshop and we'll sketch it out. So just as an overview of what we're looking to do, this is a target which I made in Photoshop. It looks like a flag. So at the moment, when the user hits the target, an X is placed. And my idea is that we want to work out how far the target is away from where the user has shot. So we're going to take the center of the target and work out the distance between there and <laughs> there. And this is going to be calculated as a percentage. So you've got, say, this is 0% here and this is 100% or vice versa. And then we can work out how accurate the user's been and then assign like a little bonus based on how close they've managed to get to the center of the target. Obviously, if they shoot here, um, they're going to get less of um, a bonus. But if they can get really close, um, then they're going to get rewarded for that. I think that's just better than having um, a simple flat rate for each target. But there's a couple of things we're going to need to do in our scripts to accommodate for this. So let's hop back into Visual Studio and take a look. So we already have a little bit of functionality in our game manager to accommodate for handling a score. And at the moment, that's what we're using to hold the score is the game manager. As we go forward, we might um, refactor this and put the, the score in its own kind of score manager class. But for the, for the minute, the game manager is looking after it. And you can see here, we've got a method. It's called player scored. It's going to take in a target value and then it's just going to increment our score accordingly. And this target value um, is assigned to score, which as you can see at the top is just a private float. And we've got a property just to give us access to that. So the, the game manager is already kind of prepared for us and ready to go. If you haven't got that in your game manager, go ahead add it in and that's kind of all the work required to kind of hold that hold that value for the time being but let's have a look at our target script this is the tar this is a script that actually sits on the targets so when the target is shot this is where we want to figure out how much of a score to pass to our game manager but we need to know a couple of things in order to be able to calculate that score properly we need to know whereabouts on the target the player has actually hit and that comes from the gunfire script, which sits on the gun. Because when it's ray cast, we're sending, we're creating a hit point, and we can actually use that to create the point in space that we need to be able to work out our accuracy. So the gunfire script sits on the gun. As you can see here, we've got the gunfire script. Uh, and we've been working on this as the tutorials have progressed. So go ahead and open that one up. Uh, and this is where we're going to start. So let's begin, let's start setting this up to be able to pass in that position. And that position in space is generated by our Raycast. And because we're using an interface to make these scripts talk to each other, the gunfire script and the target script, we can actually pass that hit point value um, between the scripts. So where we've got hit transform dot get component, I target dot shoot, this is where we're accessing um, the component that we've hit see if it's implementing the interface i target and if it is then we're calling the method shot and we can pass this a value so we can say hit dot point and this is the transform that we need um, to calculate our accuracy now you'll see you'll get a red squiggly line um, that says that our shot method doesn't cater for taking in an argument so we can go ahead and fix that we're going to go ahead and save this and Currently, we're going to have an error in Unity because we've got a red squiggly line. But you want to go ahead and open up your interface, which is called iTarget. And in here, we just want to pass a parameter. So we're going to have a vector free. We'll call this hit point. 
you see we've got a red squiggly line here we actually need to use a namespace to be able to um, use some of the functionality within this interface so we need one of our using statements and that's going to be using we'll say unity engine and go ahead finish off with a semicolon and that will get rid of that error and allow us to pass that argument to the shot method go ahead and save and go back to the gunfire script and you'll see now that that error has gone away so this is all we need for our gunfire script to work it's going to pass us that point in space where we've hit but because we've now changed our eye target and sorry about this bear with me this is, might get confusing because we've changed our eye target and um, it's gonna break a couple of scripts mainly our target script because you can see here um we, although we're implementing the interface as before we're not we're not catering for that argument in our shot method inside our script so all we really need to do is write vector free hit point in our shot method and then that's that's now fulfilled the requirements for our interface but we'll need to do the same in our game start target which also implements the interface and where we've got the shot just pop in here vector free hit point doesn't matter that we don't don't use it it's there um and in this case it kind of works which is what we need so back to the target script we've now successfully passed our hit point to our sh uh, to our shot method where we can now calculate the score so now let's go ahead and extend our shot method inside our target script to actually calculate that score so where we've got if allow target to be shot we want to create a method and we are going to call it calculate accuracy finish off with a semicolon we don't have this method yet so you can um, hover over it press control and full stop and generate method target calculate accuracy I'm just going to put it just down below so now for the time being this is where we're going to be working we're going to be working out how close the user managed to get to the center of the target so what we'll need inside this calculate accuracy method is that vector free that we um, brought across from our interface so we can see we've got it here in our shot method we'll go ahead and we'll pass that to our calculate accuracy so we'll say hit point now it will go red because we haven't got that argument in our calculate accuracy so we put vector free hit point and what we're going to do in this method is basically we're going to send back to our shot method a float which is the percentage of how accurate we were and because we're returning a value from a method we need to change a couple of things rather than being private void calculate accuracy we're going to say private float and that'll go red for a minute and that's okay we just haven't returned any values yet and then where because we're returning something back to our shot method we actually need somewhere to store it so we create a temporary variable we'll say var accuracy equals and then we'll call the method so this method is called works out the percentage sends the value back and it's going to store it in accuracy right so the first thing we need to do is create a temporary variable we'll call it max distance and this number represents how far away you can go from the target which we kind of need be better to actually accurately measure how wide our target was from the center to the edge but we can just put i'm guessing that at the moment it's about 12 centimeters wide so we'll go with that for a minute for our max distance so this is like the distance from the center to the edge now let's work out how far away our hit point was from the center of the target so we we'll create a variable we'll call it distance from target and we can use some of the inbuilt um, methods for vector free here so we can say vector free dot distance and if you hold over the mouse you can say it returns the distance between a and b it's perfect that's what we need so our a point is going to be our current position which is the center of the target and then our hit point where we've actually hit on the target we go ahead and finish off with a semicolon so this is going to give us a figure um, 
but we want to know like a percentage naught to 100 how accurate were we so zero percent is a miss obviously one percent might be like the edge right on the edge of the target and then at the center of the target is a hundred percent so we want to turn this figure into a percentage so let's create another variable we'll call it percentage accuracy and this is going to be the distance from the target divided by our max distance value by 100. Because of the way I've got it around there, we might just need to um, invert that. So at the minute, I think the way we've got it, um, the closer we are, it's going to read 0%. So um, let's just kind of invert that. So we'll say bar percentage inversion. This is probably really messy. I'm just kind of like doing this on the fly. 100 minus percentage accuracy. So now that'll give us the, a percentage where 100% is nearer the center of the target as opposed to the edge. And now we need to pass this back to our shot method. So we can say return percentage inversion, which is this value here. After we've worked out how far we are, we've calculated that as a percentage and then now we're sending it back. And as you can see, um, our red squeaky line under calculate accuracy has gone away and it's passed that value back here. So we've stored that value now as a percentage. And now we can use that to calculate a bonus figure that we can add on to the base value of our target. Okay, so let's have a look at doing that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another local variable. We'll call it the score. And our score is going to be based off a, a flat base value for the target of just hitting it. This is what you get. Um, for a minute, let's just say if you hit a target, it's 100 points. Now, this number, um, we would probably want to be a variable eventually. Just for the sake to test if this works. Um, we're going to take a base value and you could times that by your accuracy. So the more accurate you are, the, the better your score is going to be. So you can say by accuracy. That's kind of like your bonus. So this is great. We've stored our score here. Um, so you get 100 points for just simply hitting the target. And then you get rewarded for your accuracy. But now we need to store this value in the game manager. Because the game manager is a singleton, we can say game manager for instance dot player scored and pass it the score. Which is here. So we're passing it this. And finish off with a semicolon so now we've done that we want to be able to see just to test that this is working inside the inspector because we're not actually displaying the score to the player at any point yet so what we can do is we can write a debug log here and we'll go for the dollar sign and, and let's start our string here so we can say accuracy can't spell it accuracy is and then you want to type in accuracy here and let's give that a color so we can see it better in the inspector so let's open up the triangular brackets i think they're called and just write color equals green it makes me happy and then finish that off we'll do a different color for the other one and then we'll go put a couple of lines in there we'll say score Let's do color equals what color? Blue. And we'll write score. So we're just debugging those two values, giving a bit of color just to brighten up our day. And then we'll finish that, close that color statement off. And then semicolon. And go ahead and save. So let's hop into VR and see if this is all hooked up and working. All right, let's fire up old faithful. Oh, it didn't hit play. Oh. Right, here we go. Let's see if this is working. So, I'm just going to shoot a target. Not that one, that won't work. So, we're going to hit this target. Go. Oh, actually, bomb by default. Okay, right, so let's pause a second. You can see here we've got our log in the console. Can't read it. And we can see it's calculated our accuracy at 52.4% which should be almost halfway between the edge and the center of the target, which it kind of is. That's good. And um, it's given us a score of 5,000 points. Um, that'll do me. Nice. 
Let's see if we can hit it again slightly closer and get a better result. I'm gonna test my aim. Ooh, that's gonna be a good score. There we go, 80% accuracy. And that's given us 8,800 points. So you can see it's now calculating accuracy based on how close we are to the center of the target, which I think gives it a lot more variety and makes it a little bit more challenging. Now you're never actually gonna be able to get 100% and let me tell you why. Because um, we have a collider on our target, let's get the target for you. So we have a collider on our target, center of the collider, which is the thing it's taken into consideration for the accuracy calculation is right in the middle. Um, whenever actually get, so there's always gonna be this little bit of space between the edge of the collider and the center. We're always gonna have this little bit of distance. So it's never gonna be 100% but it will be very, very close. And that probably really doesn't matter too much in the sense that we're only giving it as a, a bonus to the player for how well they've got to the center of the target. So in the next one, what we'll do is we'll create uh, a canvas and every time you shoot the target, we'll pop the score on the canvas to give a little bit of visual feedback to the player so they know how much they've scored. And then we could also store the score as a total maybe underneath where we're showing the timer. I'm just super conscious that, that, that if I do that in this video, it's gonna be really long and um, I'd rather make them small and useful as opposed to quite long and um, get people getting lost. So just as a recap, what we've done today is added the ability so that when you shoot a target, it calculates how well we've done in that shot and by giving us a percentage of accuracy, so the closer we are to the center, that's 100%, uh, and as it drifts away from the, the middle, um, you're gonna be reduced all the way down to like 0% or one or 2%, um, so you don't get so much of a bonus. And we've done that by utilizing scripts we've already written, and um, we're passing the hit point where we've done the ray cast from our gun, and we're passing that value through our interface as a vector free, back into our target, which detects which has when it's been shot. And then all the, um, the accuracy calculations are carried out just to figure out how well we've done. And then we're passing that back to the game manager. So hopefully you've found that quite useful. I appreciate there's a lot of jumping around in the scripts. Um, but hopefully by seeing how I've managed to accomplish it, uh, you can figure out it for your own games. And I reckon definitely this calculate accuracy can be simplified. Um, I was just kind of winging it, but um, there's, there's probably like a one line piece of code that will, will get you exactly what you need. But um, to be honest, as long as the code works and the player's having fun, um, that's the main goal, right? They're not going to care too much about what's going under the hood, which is good because my math is crazy. So there we go. We've now actually managed to set up quite a good scoring system that's based on how close we've got to the center of our target. And in the next one, we'll go ahead and look at the canvas that pops up next to the target, giving the visual indication to the player on their score. If you've liked what you've seen and you found it useful, then please consider a subscription or hit the like button below. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.